Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for November 2022. It's been a little while. Let's take a look at what's new on the layout. First of all, I just want to apologize for the lack of content on my channel. Um, got to be summer there and we were just really busy. Bought a second mini bike. I know in the last video way back in May there, I was talking about that little CT70. So we bought another one of those. We had two we were fixing up over the summer and got both of those working. I'll throw some video footage of those in. And then just summer overall, family stuff. Um, really busy with kids' activities now. School, both of them, both of our kids are in school now, so we're doing that all the time. And we're just busy in general. And I, any of you that run a YouTube channel or make videos, you know how much time goes into them. And I was just finding that I would just rather spend my time actually working on the layout than making a video. So we'll see over the winter here how much time I uh, actually have, but we'll just have to see how it goes. So we'll start with uh, new rolling stock on the layout. Really, just like the videos, I didn't really get a whole lot of new stuff over the entire summer. Um, my friend Scott had an extra one of these Via Coach cars and he decided he was going to get out of the Via stuff, so I was able to get that from him, so shout out to Scott. It's the same as my other uh, just a 100 series Via Stainless Bud Coaches. And then for new stuff, this was it for the whole summer, and I had ordered these, like, it must have been two and a half years ago. These are the Inner Mountain... They call them the 14 panel coal porter. I believe these were X coal porters that were then bought by Soltran. I've always been a, a fan of these sulfur cars just because it's kind of a unique commodity to uh, railroad operations around me. So I like to see them and like to model what I see. We'll get into what I've been working on in the layout, starting with this car. So a long time ago, I think last year, I bought these decals from Circus City Decals. Water slide decals, it's a famous car. A lot of people have seen it. This was the uh, SKNX 397367 with some really interesting graffiti on it. Fun fact is that uh, it didn't last long like this. And uh, I think someone reported it to the Saskatchewan Grain Car Corp and it was repainted. So there isn't actually many photos of this thing running around like this, but still a really unique car. And I had those decals. And last week I was looking for kind of a cold weather project and I had this car was sitting on my uh, workbench, so I got this done. I took a shot at weathering it too while I was at it. I did renumber it, so it's uh, it's renumbered to the proper number. It was 3961, so it was pretty easy just to change the one digit on it. And these decals from Circus City actually come with the renumbering package, so that's pretty cool. You can renumber it while you do it. Uh, weathered everything, airbrushed it, kind of faded it. And I also did the little uh, the white kind of painting on the bolsters. So the, the actual car had this, and uh, if memory serves me correct, this is a different car shops um, would rebuild these trucks on these grain cars, and they each had a different way that they would paint the bolsters. So this means that this was uh, redone at a certain car shop. So then on the other side, I had some leftover graffiti decals from Weathering Solutions, so I put one on there, and then there's just some little tags and stuff, and a light weathering job, same deal on the trucks. So that was a fun little project, great way to stay warm on a really cold winter day and I'm looking forward to doing more of those. So now we'll take a look at the rest of the layout and before I forget I've been meaning to show these for a while. I found these back in the spring but I'm always on the lookout for materials that can be used on the model railway. So I found these at uh, Walmart for four bucks or something. So they call them 10 centimeter four inch bamboo skewers. But the, uh, the awesome thing about these is the diameter of them. So the problem with bam bamboo skewers, just regular ones, is they're usually too thick. But these ones here are really nice. So that's just under 2 mil. Um, so that's a really cheap telephone pole or different log loads or posts or whatever you want to do. That is almost um, the right thickness for a uh, for telephone pole. So if you see those at Walmart. 300 for four bucks, that's a good deal. All right, so over here on the layout, I actually did get a bit done over the summer. No trains have been running because I sprayed the whole tracks all the way around to uh, Lake Louise. And I've just been slowly working my way around painting ties, just like I did in the Banff yard, if you remember years back in the videos there. I've got about three colors and then I just vary the, the amount of dilution and that really gives you a lot of variety and then as I go kind of painting the light ones 
darker ones representing ones that have been replaced and just giving the, the track some overall variety to make it look like real kind of track out on the main line. That's what it looks like when I go past. Totally random. I try to do just referencing like mainline photos. If you count 10 ties, how many new ones is there? Kind of gives you the state of what the track is like. Um, and on most common main lines, you know, there's quite a few new, brand new dark ties. So just try to capture that. I really like the overall result, like when you paint, you know, multiple feet of flex track. And uh, I always airbrush it first, the whole thing gets a like, rail grime and that's how I get the rail coated with paint. And then I go back and hand paint the individual ties with brushes. In my opinion, it's worth the, uh, the extra work. It's a lot of work. Um, it's kind of like the pod, you put a podcast on and do three feet at a time kind of thing, but it takes a long time. But the end result is worth it, in my opinion. This is the Fairview Road grade crossing and the reason I was painting ties, then I was able to go in and install my uh, custom weathered grade crossing. So this is an old Osborne model kits uh, laser cut grade crossing. It was actually on my old layout. I, I uh, carefully peeled it up and saved it. And now it's uh, I recut it and kind of it's, it's set at an angle because that's the way this road crosses. And then repainted it to kind of be more weathered, referencing prototype photos. And I uh, sanded it so it's nice and uh, when you run your fingers over it you can feel that the rail still sticks up about a millimeter and that's what you want. You don't want this to be clipping any uh, trip pins or anything so it's all installed now and uh, it looks awesome. Oh, once we get this ballasted I think this grade crossing is going to look really good. I'm really happy with the way the backdrop turned out at this location. So the last thing I was working on was the second print or print 2 for Moran's Curve. And I've got the, the test print number one. I actually cut it out and tried to see how it, how it went. It's got a few issues that I need to correct. Uh, mainly, the river scene needs to be a little bit longer here. So I've already been working on Photoshop for that and fix that portion of it up. And then the overlap portion need, needed a little bit of work. It was about six inches too short. So I've been working on some Photoshop down on that end too. And then this I'll print this one last time and I'll be done with this. 32 foot wall here for the Morantz curve side. I did build a couple racks of trees here and there when I had time. So I do have a whole bunch here. I don't know how many this is, but these are all ready to go once I start getting into the scenery and I've got another rack on the other side. So probably have a couple hundred trees ready. Gonna need a lot more. I'm gonna need to keep building trees over the winter, but it's a cumulative effort. This kind of thing doesn't happen overnight. So that's it for new stuff on the layout. Now we'll jump Back to the farm. This was taken in the fall, but uh... so for a quick tractor update, this spring I changed out the driver's side tie rod. That seemed to help it quite a bit. I did take the steering apart, the steering wheel apart, and uh, I found the nut. There's a big two-inch nut inside there, and that was loose. So I re redid that, retightened it. There's still a significant power steering leak up in here somewhere. I think it's probably from the power steering pump, so that'll be this winter's project probably. The previous owner had it set up for snow plowing, so kind of a snow plow tractor here in Canada. That's a common thing for farmers to have. It's just a, a tractor dedicated to just pushing snow with the blade, so he had a blade on it. So we got a salvage rim from Wrecker. I uh, got it sandblasted and painted in town, so that's looking pretty sweet there on the back end. That new rear rim. And one more issue it's got is this passenger side seal is leaking on the rear axle bearing I think so that'll be another probably winter project. We have a mechanic friend that I think will probably end up taking it over there. Overall it's been a good addition to the farm. My brother and I have been using it for quite a few different things. Um, it's working really well for us. It's definitely our best starting tractor we've got now because it's got a rebuilt fuel pump. So that's the update with our Massey 1085. So it's been a few years since I've shown anything to do with my Holden K3LR uh, XCN actual three chime air horn. Pretty much just because I didn't have enough air capacity and a few years ago I'd put this together but I never finished the plumbing on it. So this summer I finally went and found the uh, all the fittings that I needed to kind of make this work. So these are two semi tanks off of a, it's actually off of a 53 foot container chassis. They're plumbed together on the back side. Significantly more air capacity than I had in the previous video. If you guys have been following along that time, I think it was like nine years ago that I showed this horn in action. I was just using a little 10 gallon compressor 
and you couldn't even get four full honks out of it. So with 30 gallons, I'm hoping you can at least get a couple horn sequences and there'll be a pressure gauge there so you can keep track of your pressure. I've got the quick connect here now so we can just reverse the truck to the shop here, plug the big shop compressor in it and then recharge this thing and then you close the valve, unhook and off you go, you got air again. So it's rated for pretty much full, whatever the air compressor can put out, it's rated for, but it does have a safety valve there. So if it did ever overpressure, there is a relief valve. Don't know how good it is. I mean, it came off this old rusted container chassis, so you probably can't count that for anything. But so then here on the horn, I just noticed, I was actually loading this into the truck and I noticed it. So you can see these 9 16th bolts here. This is what bolts each chime down to this manifold and that's where the air comes from. And I noticed on this one, it's actually got a crack here on the manifold and somebody, pre the previous owner, seen it and they put a thicker washer on here to try and hold it down. So I'm going to clean that up, I'm going to take it apart and see if I can at least JB weld it and then put it back together and maybe it'll hold air a little bit because I think... Alright, so upon further investigation, it was broke some time ago and this this is sand cast aluminum from my understanding. A piece of the mount broke off here on the side. What they had done was just put a thicker washer on it. It just tried to hold both pieces in place and it was working. But I bet you it's getting not, if there's air leakage because there's no gasket here. And the other two have gaskets. So I'm going to try and JB weld this. I talked to an aluminum welder in town and he said he didn't even want to try attempting to TIG weld this. Um, it's a good chance that you just ruin it because of the quality of the aluminum. So we'll try JB Weld and we'll do the same thing they had done before with the larger washer. That'll probably hold it for our purposes and then I'm going to make a gasket out of something in my dad's shop here. Not sure what yet, but we'll make a gasket and hopefully that'll ensure all the air that this chime needs is uh, getting to it and not leaking out through this. So then the biggest improvement on the horn itself is I actually went and bought the correct Graham White locomotive horn valve. So these are what you would replace on an actual locomotive. This is a special valve that has throttling ability. I thought it'd be cool to at least have it vertical, kind of how it is on a locomotive. So this whole thing will go, can go on the truck cab. Just have to take the camera off the tripod to see this, but you can see there Graham White, Salem, Virginia. I got it from a website called Horn Blasters. So there's a whole subset hobby of people that have air horns and they got all the stuff you need if you wanted to either blow air horns or you have air horns. I think you can actually buy air horns from them too. All right, so that'll wrap up this layout update. As always, thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you next time.